Okay, this is number two from the 2019 Calc AB exam, and it's a, kind of a particle motion uh, table type problem. Um, so we know the velocity of particle P is given in the table. P is a differentiable function, which is gonna be important. Um, units are meters per hour, T is measured in hours. Um, and the particle P is at the origin at time T equals zero, which we'll need eventually. So the first question, is justify why there must be at least one time t between 0.3 and 2.8 at which v prime of t, the acceleration of particle p, equals zero meters per hour per hour. So um, this, if you see a table problem, you should expect this kind of thing because this is definitely a mean value theorem problem. So since it's a mean value theorem problem, we wanna state the um, necessary conditions. So we're given in the problem that uh, v p of t is differentiable and since it's differentiable, we know that it must be continuous, so and therefore continuous. So v p, v p of t um, is differentiable and therefore continuous. Um, that's what we need for the mean value theorem. So I'm gonna say therefore by mean value theorem, um, and now I'll just do it. So v prime, p, v p prime of t, I guess, that's hard to say, um, is equal to v p of 2.8 minus v p of 0.3 over 2.8 minus 0.3. This is actually a calculator question, so you, you could use a calculator, but um, the values in the table, if we fill them in, 55 minus 55 over 2.8 minus 0.3, and that's definitely gonna be zero. Um, and then I'm just gonna say for um, some t, where t is an element of 0.3 to 2.8, and we answered it, all right? So that's part A, very expected problem. Uh, let's move on to part B. So we're still using the table, it says, Use a trapezoidal sum with three subintervals, 0 to 0 0.3, 0 0.3 to 1.7, 1.7 to 2.8 to approximate the value of this integral. So we want the integral from 0 to 2.8, vp of t dt. Um, so it doesn't use the entire table, which is something to kind of take note of. Um, and also they tell you the intervals, which is kind of interesting. I think it's because they didn't use the entire table. Uh, so let's see if we can do this. So trapezoidal sum. So that's gonna be approximately, so the area of a trapezoid is one half uh, the height times the sum of the bases. So it's gonna be one half. And then our first trapezoid goes from zero to 0.3. So that's a height of 0.3. Um, and then the sum of these bases, so zero and 55. So I'm just gonna write zero plus 55. Uh, then we're gonna keep going. So a second trapezoid, so plus one half. We're gonna go from 0.3 to 1.7, which is 1.4 units. Remember, this is a calculator problem. Uh, I mean, I think you should be able to do that, but still. And then we need the sum of the bases. So 55 plus negative 29, or 55 minus 29. Um, and then we're gonna do it one more time. So plus one half, because it's trapezoids, uh, from 1.7 to 2.8. So that's gonna give us 1.1. And then we need to add up these bases. So negative 29 plus 55. Uh, so technically you can actually leave this because you don't have to simplify these. But it turns out in this problem, which is a calculator problem, you need to use this value later. So it's a good idea to actually evaluate this. So I'm gonna say, I just added it all up on a calculator. So I'm not even gonna show that um, page. So uh, we get approximately 40.75. So. Um, that is, uh, we don't have to interpret it, but I guess that would be the distance, that would be the displacement on that interval um, because uh, we're not doing the absolute value of VP of T. All right, let's take a look at the next part. So the next part is like totally different. We introduce a new particle, particle Q, also moving along the x-axis, um, also between zero and four, its velocity is given to us as this function. So 45 root T, cosine of 0.063t squared. So one of the things when you enter that on your calculator, make sure that after you do radical t, you get out of the radical so that you're not gonna put that cosine inside the radical. That's a really common mistake. And uh, for this problem, we wanna find the time interval during which the velocity of q is at least 60 meters per hour. Um, so that's more like an algebra two question. And then find the distance traveled on that interval. Um, okay. so. First thing is we want to solve when VQ of T is greater than or equal to 60. So this, to me, I'm gonna grab my calculator, I'm gonna store V, so I, I just called it V, 
um, instead of VQ and I store it, it says done. Then I try to use solve, which is not one of the features that your calculator needs. And this happens a lot. It just doesn't really work. It gives you some weird thing. Anytime that happens, it means go to the graph. So I went to the graph and the graph came out really nicely. So now I can tell that we're above 60 on uh, this interval from 1.866 to 3.519. So make sure when you graph it, you graph V of X, otherwise the calculator won't do anything really. It'll ask you if you wanna put a slider in actually. Um, and that's kind of a signal that you've used the wrong variable. Um, also, what you wanna do is you wanna take those values and store them. That's why they're bold in this. And I have other videos that show you how to do that in case you're not sure. So make sure you store those values. So I've stored them as A and B. But to answer the first question, when is V greater than or equal to 60? I'm just gonna write this down. So 1.866 to 3.519. So it's greater than or equal to, so we should use greater than the, the equal to's there. And uh, then we need to find the distance traveled on uh, that interval. So we know the velocity is definitely uh, positive. So I'm just gonna do the distance is the integral of velocity. Technically I should do the integral of the absolute value of velocity, um, but I know that it's greater than or equal to 60, so it's definitely positive. And so I used calculator and I got this. So you can see where I stored A and B and I, I just typed them to show you that the values were stored. That's a really useful calculator skill, so make sure you uh, uh, work on that and can do it. Let's take a look at part D. Okay, part D is weird. It combines particles P and Q. So at t equals zero, particle Q is at position x equals negative 90. Use the result from part B and the function VQ from part C to approximate the distance between particles P and Q at t equals 2.8. So that's our objective. All right, so if you remember, in the problem it said particle P is at the origin at t equals zero, so that's gonna be important. So that means that x equals zero. Um, and we also in uh, part B figured out the integral from zero to 2.8 of VP of T dt is approximately 40.75. So that was the displacement. So from that, we can figure out where particle P is at T equals 2.8. So at T equals 2.8, P is definitely at X, I'm just calling it X sub P, um, is equal to 40.75. So that's where P is at 2.8. Now we're gonna do kind of the same thing for Q but we need to take a slightly different approach because we didn't work it out yet. So at t equals zero, we're told in this part of the problem, q is at x equals negative 90. Um, we also were told uh, v sub q is this function, which we already stored on our calculator. And now what we wanna do is figure out where this thing is at t equals 2.8. So q is gonna be at x sub q equals where it starts, which is negative 90 plus um, it's displacement, and displacement will be the integral from zero to 2.8 of V sub Q. And then use a calculator, we get uh, that that value is 45.9377. So that's approximately this. And then uh, the question, so three decimals always, um, the question is approximate the distance between the particles. Well, they're both on the x-axis. So if I just subtract their x-coordinates, absolute value, or I, I just know that xq is bigger. so. Uh, I'm gonna write up my answer. So at t equals 2.8, uh, there should be a comma there. At t equals 2.8, comma, particles p and q are approximately xq minus xp, which is approximately 5.188 units apart. All right, so that is question number two. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.